In this video, I'm going to show an example of how I use the simulator to run bits of code to verify either that I understood the code properly, or uh, another example would be if I'm uh, trying to duplicate some code, like uh, check some algorithm or a uh, decryption code. For this example, I'll use uh, just a random uh, table read function that I picked out of a, a certain ROM, 8U92A. And I'll try and see if we can uh, validate the order of the uh, the arguments. Um, like for instance, R5 is, I just called it X is 5, but I want to know is it that X or Y. So I'll run this piece of code, feed it some arguments, and see if I can find anything. The first thing I do before running a simulator is to make sure I, I have a good handle of how the code is used and what to look for. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure the argument, well, I'm sure now because I, I checked, but the first thing I do is each of these functions uh, does a lookup uh, calculation on each axis. And for this one, this one's a bit special because it does a shift left operation before doing the comparison. What I mean by that is the value here, the first hint I got is the uh, extend unsigned, which means it's expecting a 16-bit value in R7. But the axis, I think it's this one here, the axis holds 8-bit values. So let's go back to the, uh, the lookup function. Here's the axis lookup. Uh, so it picks a value out of the axis extended, so it's still bytes. It's pulling bytes out of the axis, but it's shifting left by two before comparing. It's a way for them to uh, use a an 8-byte axis, but still uh, compare it to 16-bit values. It, sa it saves on uh, memory space. Okay, back inside the first one. Okay, there's no surprises there otherwise. And the second one, that's to look up the second axis. Here it's it's uh, the ordinary type where it's pulling out a byte from the axis, uh, column or row headers, whatever. Then it's doing the comparison and a bunch of math. And then some more math there, it interpolates and pulls a value out of the table. This isn't really interesting. What I really want to find out is what value is returned out of the table. So the table here is Oh, it's actually a conditional. Okay, look at this. This table read function uses R4 as a pointer to the table, but it's loaded either with this address or this one according to some logic. So I'll just assume it's using this table here. It's an 8x8 filled with bytes. So I'll try and pick some uh, access lookup values to, uh, let's say, I'll try and hit this this cell here because, oh no, bad example, let me see. I'm looking for a value that's fairly unique and not along a, a diagonal so that I can determine uh, which is the row, which is the column. So 5B, yeah, that's good. Okay, so it's that would be column 4, row 1. Let's see if we can uh, if we can do that. So to hit this, let's assume let's assume R5, the first axis here. Let's assume that's the the column headers. So I want column number 4, so I want something close to 38. But the value that will let me hit 38, because of the shift left operation that I mentioned, will be... Uh, I'll run the math on that, <laughs> and I'll, I'll load it properly in the simulator. Um, as for the other column, uh, the, the other axis, I'll just uh, throw 0 in, so I'm, I'll land in the first column. Uh, before jumping into the simulation, I'll just look at a few more things. So th this is the lookup function, but uh, since it takes arguments and it works on the stack, I have to run a bit of code prior to this function. So what I do first is just pick any place, well actually the place I was looking at. So in the simulator, I'll have to run at least a bunch of instructions to get the, the arguments loaded properly. So I'll probably start this, so I'll just note the address here, 1b. I'll actually write it down, 1b, 
6-2-A. And what I'll need to do is, well, R4 is okay, it's loaded automatically. This might be a problem, it's loading a value from RAM. R9, what's it doing? Okay, so R0. It's pulling a value from RAM as a lookup value for the second axis. And it should be doing the same. Let me see, let me see. R7, okay. It's using R7, which came from somewhere, probably another calculation. It doesn't matter. So R7 is copied to R0. Then it's saved on the stack. As I explained in another video, it can only use R4 to R7 usually for arguments, and if it needs extra arguments, they have to go on the stack, which is what's happening here. So R7 will be the second axis lookup value. I wrote it down here. It's a byte. Okay, so I just opened HEW uh, High Performance Embedded Workshop. It's available for free from a Renaissance uh, website. And when you open it, it asks you to create a new workspace. Uh, pick application, type in a name, directory, whatever. This is all good so far. Tool chain. Then you got to pick the right CPU series to pick the the type you're going to simulate. In my case, it'll be 7058. Uh, this doesn't matter because we're not compiling, so we don't care. This uh, we don't need the heap. Uh, yeah, that's probably okay. I don't need that for sure. Uh, initial stack pointer. It's usually 7FFC. But this setting doesn't matter, we will change it later when we run the simulator. Now we don't need those. This one we absolutely need to run the simulator. Uh, double check, I got the right type here. Simulator, uh, I think this is all okay. Uh, it's just generating a bunch of files that we don't really care about. And this is what you end up with, pretty much nothing. And the trick is to go into here and select the simulator session created. This uh, here we go. This I don't I don't usually tick this box. I don't think it's necessary. CMT. I think it's um, to simulate the timers. So I usually don't care about those. So okay. Uh, this is hardly any better. There's still not much. And the key is to go into here, download modules, and you want to add the ROM dump in there. Uh, download a new module. Offset zero, the format will be binary. File name, let's go pick that here. Okay, access size, yeah, that's all fine. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. Uh, now I need uh, I need some more info here, so I'll be debugging. debugging. So the first thing I want is disassembly. I think actually if you uh, if you reset if you reset CPU like this there you go and so it's already at zero one zero four because uh, the reset function of the debugger uh, loads the reset vector from uh, zero in the ROM and the stack pointer should be loaded too and then it jumps to zero one zero four which is where we were just then. Uh, I think this is the registers, yeah. You'll want this for sure. You got your registers here. So you see R15, which is the stack pointer, got loaded as 7FFC. Uh, sometimes I think sometimes I forget to do the, the reset CPU, so I have to uh, manually edit this value. Because otherwise, if it's at zero, uh, then you're going to get memory access errors when it tries to, to push parameters or return addresses on the stack. Uh, I need another window too. Let me see memory. Let's go and look at the stack. So seven F zero zero. Let's do that. Oh, nice. Okay, this is a uh, RAM contents, and the pointer is at FFFC, so it's actually a bit farther down. And there's nothing yet. That's okay. All right, let's go back to IDA because I forgot the address already. Okay, one B six two A. In the simulator here, the shortcuts are really awful. Well, the usability is is really awful. So 
Um, set address 1B62A. So doing that didn't actually change the program counter. It's still at 0104. So once you got the right address, you have to right click again, then set PC here. Okay, so that's the next opcode we're going to execute. And this move instruction will load R4 with uh, 6991. Let's see if that works. Let me just see the shortcuts. Step in. Step in is the one you'll be uh, using the most often. The difference between step in and step over is if you have a JSR like this line here, if you do step in, you're going to go inside this function. If you do step over, it'll just execute and then you'll resume on the next opcode. Which is actually this one because, you know, delay slot opcodes and all that stuff. Okay, so F. Alright, it's just single step one, and here's R4 containing 6991, as expected. Then it's doing this. Okay. Before I run this one, move R7 to R0. This is what I was talking about just before. This will be copied onto the stack and used as uh, the lookup value for the second axis. And for that axis, I said I wanted 0 to make sure to, to use either uh, row 1 or column 1. Uh, this is already zero, so we're fine. Okay, step, step. All right. <clears throat> Let me see what happened there. I'm looking for the the value that we just wrote, supposedly on the stack, and I can't find it. Let me see. Should be at seven F F C. It should be the rest. Oh yeah, I just wrote a zero. That's why <laughs> I don't recognize it. It's it's one of these values. All right, next opcode here. What we're doing there? <coughs> oh yes, we're reading from RAM. R nine is pointing into RAM here, and that's what's that doing here? R zero. That will be. Remember the delay slot. So it's taking R zero. It's extending. 16 bits into 32 bits and that will be the lookup value for this axis and this I wanted column number four so this value here 38 which is going to be shifted by two positions or multiplied by four and that's E0 I just calculated before this so uh, let me just throw that in there E0 okay then we just loaded R5, that's the address of a of the first axis, that's the second axis. Then delay slot, okay, All right, here we are, 4ECC, that's, that's inside the function we're looking at. Okay, so what am I expecting here? It's going to push some arguments, move, shuffle some registers around, then call this function here with three arguments, the axis address, the size, which is seven. Well, it's actually size minus one, so it's eight. And the lookup value in R5. Okay, so step, step. Here you see uh, it, it highlights in red the values that just changed on the last step. So that's, that's good. Actually, I'm going to skip ahead ahead because I don't really want to go through the whole thing. It's it's a bit tedious, so I'll just uh, step over this and I'll just do step over a couple steps until I get to. Uh, let me see. I want to get to the part where the the map area is red, which would be somewhere around here, because R4 was the map address, the table address, and here we're loading a byte into uh, from two adjacent cells and doing some math, presumably. Um, actually, no, uh, I'll just uh, run till here. Address 5400. Let's see what that gives. And the shortcut for that is step over F10. Okay. <coughs> uh, just for fun, I, I just uh, came out of uh, the first Access read function. I'm just looking at the registers here. So R1, I recognize it. This is, was my this was my lookup value, 
Uh, R3 at seven kind of looks like the size of the uh, of the axis, and three three kind of looks suspiciously like uh, the an index. So it found my lookup value at index three, and R5 no idea what that is. That doesn't matter either. Okay, I'll step with some more. What's this now? Oh, it's, this is probably the lookup value for axis number two. And this is the lookup function for axis number two. Let's run that too. All right. Um, just looking at the registers here, zero. There's nothing really uh, interesting there. Skip, 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 skip. Skip, skip. Uh, it's doing some math here, multiplying. This is probably part of the interpolation. Um, I'm really not looking in detail. If I was uh, duplicating a function, what I'd do is split this function. Maybe, uh, maybe I'd put a breakpoint here, or just step until this instruction because it's it's common code. Everything, every function call runs through this line for sure, which isn't the case for this because there's conditional jumps. So I'd set a breakpoint here, or execute until here. Look at the at the registers in in the simulator. And then in the code that I'm writing, uh, most likely C code, I do some print uh, print apps just to see the values, just to see if my execution lines up with this up to that line. Uh, back to the simulator. Okay, BT. Let's go here. Uh, 53 F. We're almost done here. This is near the end. Okay, this is almost the last instruction and. Uh, as as usual, the return value is an R0, and it's 56. So with the input values that I gave it, it's returning 56. Let's go back in that map. Okay, so 56 is most, most likely this one. So what that means is <coughs> uh, R5 would be the y-axis. Uh, as opposed to what I thought. I was expecting a 5B here, but I got 56. Uh, let's do another run. I'll change the numbers around. I, I really I really want to see a 5B output value. So what I'll need to do that is go back to the axis uh, headers. Okay, so uh, actually I got 7E0B and 7E13. Those are my two axes, and they're right next to each other. This is nice. So the, on, on the f first trial run that I just did, I fed it 38 and 0. Uh, I was hoping for column number 5 and and, uh, and row 0. And it didn't work, so I'll do the opposite. So I'll, I'll give it 10 for one, uh, for, for the, the first axis, and 60 for the other one. Okay, so I'll go back to 1B62A. Okay, I'll just look at the values I need to plug in for this this run. Oops. Ah, come on. So on the last run, I gave it uh, 38 shifted by 2-bit positions, and this time I want to give it 10. Uh, also shifted by 2 position, that's multiplied by 4. And for the other axis, which is this one here, I want to hit the 4th column, or the 4th row, whatever. So I'll have to give it 60 there. Okay, step, step. Uh, I think this is what this one is the seven bit value, uh, the the eight bit value. So this one will be 60, and it's stored. Yeah, it's this is a byte value. It's stored on the stack. This one is pulling from RAM. It's pulling 16 bits, and this one I want to. It to be the 40. So 40 is 10 multiplied by 4. All right, let's try this. Um, this time I, I won't single step through the, the function. This one I'll, I'll just do step over. Let's see if that works. Ah, it did. So it returned 5b. 5b, which, as I was planning, as I was hoping, is this one here. So this is one way. To confirm the access ordering, 
and in my experience it's way way more efficient than uh, single stepping uh, not single stepping that is but going through all this code by hand and trying to anal analyze and even the decompiler in say uh, Jidra doesn't really digest these very well because uh, often it does the optimiz optimization sort of ruins the, the code paths a bit for example I'm just oops Okay, so this one here. Usually, if if you're doing clean JSRs, you're calling a function, then you're returning. But sometimes you get a jump like this. So it's jumping somewhere in another com function completely. It's jumping right here. It's jumping in the middle of a function, and that throws the decompilers off completely. They don't know how to manage this because you're sort of hopping inside a function and not returning from it. Uh, so then you're stuck looking at assembly, and uh, that's that's a lot of work.